You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. Welcome to the AAC Report only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. Thanks so much for giving us a listen. Coming up, what you set for this week's games, including our Spotlight Game of the Week, Houston at Memphis. Frank Murtaugh, the Memphis Flyer in Memphis Magazine, will join us to talk about that Friday night game coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's recap the scoreboard from last week. The aforementioned Cougars lost in overtime to Tulane 27-24. That was a Friday night game last week. On Saturday, it was Memphis taking care of Temple 24-3. Air Force nipped Navy 13-10. East Carolina rolled easily over South Florida, 48-28. And it was Cincinnati beating Tulsa, 31-21. The schedule for this week looks like this. And, you know, this might sound a little familiar. SMU at UCF. That was going to be a Sunday game, but yet again postponed due to the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. And again, our thoughts and prayers with those affected by the storm throughout our wide listening uh, audience throughout the state of Florida. Uh, So the game was moved to Wednesday. So the Knights will host the Mustangs 7 o'clock on ESPN2. The Knights lead the all-time series 8-2. SMU, right of the Knights last year, 55-28. On Saturday... Cincinnati plays host to South Florida, 2.30 p.m. on ESPN+. The Bearcats lead the all-time series 12-7 and were victorious last year, 45-28. East Carolina at Tulane, 3.30 on ESPNU. East Carolina leads the all-time series 12-6. And they won last year's meeting, 52-29. This game we like to call the Corey Glory Bowl. Corey was the voice of East Carolina And currently now the voice of Tulane. So there we go. We'll pay homage to our friend Corey there. Tulsa Navy. That's a 3.30 kick on CBS Sports Network. Navy leads the all-time series 7-2. And the midshipmen were victorious last year by a 20-17 score. Back in a moment to look at Houston and Memphis with Frank Murtaugh of the Memphis Flyer and Memphis Magazine. Frank joins us next to talk about that game when the AAC report continues right after this. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. All right, our Spotlight Game of the Week this week is Houston at Memphis. And joining us once again to talk about this game is our friend Frank Murtaugh from the Memphis Flyer and Memphis Magazine. Frank, as always, great to have you on board. Great to be with you, Jeff. It's hard to believe we're at the midpoint of the college football season. Yeah, it is It is wild, that's for sure. So uh, when you have Houston on your schedule, 
you know, there's a good likelihood that you might be playing in an overtime game. <laughs> They've been in three so far this year uh, and certainly will be a formidable opponent for the Tigers, who are 4-1 and one, and lead the AAC currently at 2-0. and oh. Yeah, you know, Jeff, it feels like a big game. And, and you know, I, it, it sort of tugs at my heart knowing that the Cougars are on their way to the Big 12 next season. Now, this is a, a rivalry that is that dates back to the late 90s almost annually, you know, to the, the Conference USA days um, and, and for, the, you know, almost a decade now in the AAC. So you hate to, to know this is the end, um, at least, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, the Cougars, you know, picked to win the league uh, by the, by the you know, media in, in the preseason poll ahead of a Cincinnati team that, you know, played in the playoff last winter for crying out loud. They, they've, um, they, you know, they've come up short to this point, uh, two and three. But uh, you, you know it's going to be a you know it's going to be a test for Memphis. Uh, the Tigers are enjoying a, a four game winning streak. Um, the last three at home, so it's it's the right kind of clash for a Friday night, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, and of course so you got the Tigers' offense is uh, putting up a lot of points so far this season. They only put up twenty four against Temple. But uh, Temple has a decent defense uh, that they that they come to the fight with, but uh, still a twenty one point victory. So uh, things are going well for the Tigers so far. You know, yeah, they're they're trying to find their playmakers on offense. Jeff uh, Seth Hennigan, their sophomore quarterback, is a talented kid. Um, if anything, he showed me more in last Saturday's win over Temple than I, than I've seen in his first you know year and a half behind center because the fact is he didn't play well and, and the offense did not play well they, they were you know scoreless at halftime down three nothing uh Hennigan did a lot of scrambling you know not that not the kind you plan you know the a breakdown at the snap and um there, there was one fourth and two play I recall where he you know he was basically stumbling for 19 yards you know to, to maintain possession and you know winning those kind of games and, and it, it obviously turned around in the second half for the Tigers Winning those kind of games is, for me, what separates um, the, the great quarterbacks from the Hoy Polloi. And, you know, you, we love the, you know, the 300-yard games with three or four touchdown passes. And Hennigan's had his share of those for, you know, uh, just a sophomore in college. <clears throat> but when you can win a game against a, a tough defense, as you alluded to with, it, with the Owls, uh, they sacked him, I think, five times. When you can win those games, you've got something special and it's something that, that might sustain itself um, – into January. Of course, you said it feels like a big game at this time of year as the calendar turns October. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it is kind of weird to say that this early, but uh, you know, at this point, you know, if you can get position early on and uh, kind of set yourself apart as a contender in the conference, that certainly will, uh, would build well to take a victory this week. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, the nature of college football, you get you know, most, most leagues, it's eight conference games. So everyone counts, you know, you, you get as many as, two losses we've learned you know you're you know you're not competing for the league title anymore so yeah memphis is as um you know secured two wins at, at navy that's never fun you know playing that that triple option and then beating temple with their defense so now you got houston coming to town and then they got to hit the road so um you know the, the idea of memphis being back in contention for an aac title is is what this program uh, expects now, Jeff. Uh, you know, with the run they had under uh, Justin Fuente and then Mike Novell, um, y- you want you want to sustain this, and you, and you want to hold serve when your home games. They're, they they've put up a, a forty nine and seven record at what we used to call the Liberty Bowl. It's now now Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. A forty nine and seven since twenty fourteen, and so you know, holding serve at home, winning those games, and and being in contention in, in November is where you want to be. You know, the, the discouraging element, Jeff, is that there were just 23,000 fans at the game Saturday against Temple. I mean, we're talking a, a conference rival. Kickoff was a little early, 11 o'clock, but it was just it was perfect sunshine, fall Saturday. Memphis isn't drawing like it needs to, and particularly if it's aiming for, you know, the, you know, the, you know a, a larger league, you know, and then, you know, there, there are plans in place to it. Uh, to renovate the stadium to the tune of some two hundred plus million dollars. I mean, for that to all to happen, Jeff, you got to have more than twenty three thousand fans in the stands um, on a, on an optimum Saturday afternoon, and that was not the case. So it's a it's sort of a. I, I feel like we're at another pivot point. There have been a few in, in recent Memphis Tigers football history, but we're at a pivot point, you know, for, especially for Ryan Silverfield as head coach, 
um, you, you got to win games and, 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 and find that hook. Um, if the hook, you know, still exists, it's, we've had a pandemic between the days, say when 58,000 you know, fans packed the Liberty bowl for that college game day against uh, SMU from 58,000 though to 23,000, there's more than a pandemic um, to explain that. And we, you know, we in Memphis, those of us who follow the Tiger football program have to figure out what that is. And of course, uh, this week's game is on a Friday night. Uh, does the does a Friday weeknight game pose a different challenge too? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, like like most southern cities, uh, Friday night is is for high school football um, here in Memphis, and that, that's a that's an industry all on its own and a culture of its own. So I, you know, that will probably impact attendance um, for the Tigers Houston game. Uh, we got to see. You know, the Memphis fans also, they like the lights. I, I've, just speaking in generalities, not no numbers for you, the night games seem to have a different vibe around here. Um, and, and, and maybe that'll make a difference. Uh, you you got to get north of 30,000. I, I, would, I would hope you can, might get 40 um, for the Cougars in town, but we'll have to see. Yeah. And of course, uh, after, uh, actually, before I look ahead on the schedule, because, you know, we do want to take care of business this week. Uh, we talked about the offense. Uh, give me your thoughts on the Tigers' defense so far this season. I'm, I'm glad you asked. You know, the Tiger defense is what has them four and one. I'm convinced they've got a, an opportunistic, uh, you know, a, a turnover forcing defense. They've they've had eight interceptions, uh, recovered four fumbles, so twelve total turnovers. That's not a bad number for five games. Um, you know, I, I, we last time we visited, I believe I brought up the name Quindell Johnson. He, he's a safety. Cover boy for our, our preview this year. He's a you know he's a ball hawk and a, and a playmaker. But then a, a, another senior, Zay Collins at linebacker, and then third, Jalen Allen, defensive end. They're um they're they're special. You know they they guys that uh, they light up when the ball's near them. They, they uh, you know they they want to force turnovers, and to this point they they've been able to. Allen and Collins each have a pick six to their credit, and. Uh, you know, if I were to forecast anything for Friday night, I, I think it's it's what the Memphis defense does against Houston's offense uh, that that will um, you know will, will determine the outcome. You know, and the, the Tigers are riding a streak of ten straight games with a turnover. Can they make that eleven? Can they get two or three turnovers? I, I think that could make the difference. And of course, uh, moving on, you know, as we've talked about year in and year out. The AAC schedule is is just a tough one to, to to run through every year, and you know. And after this week, you have East Carolina program that's on the up. Uh, Tulane's off to a great start this season. Uh, then you got UCF coming to town, and then Tulsa. Uh, you, as you go through as you go through that list, it's like, man, it, it, you ha- you have to be focused to go one and every week. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, all four of those programs you just mentioned have have stung the Tigers recently. You know, East Carolina has recently last year won here in Memphis. Uh, Tulane, you know, down there in New Orleans has always been a house of horrors for the Tiger program. You know, and, and we know the the rivalry that Memphis and UCF have built up. Uh, that'll be a, a, a fun clash in early November. Um, you said it. I or I, I think I heard you say go, go one and oh, that, that's everyone's mantra now, and it's really uh, what what Coach Silverfield and his players are preaching. Um, it's hard not to look further down the schedule. That's what you and I are for, you know, to see how these things stack up and who will actually, you know, be competing for, you know, a major bowl consideration. Um, but, but yeah, <laughs> take care of business Friday night. The Tigers can take a breath for, you know, maybe six days. And it's going to, it's going to be another battle. Yeah, for sure. Um, so as you, as you kind of talked about Ryan Silverfield, you know, is, is uh, what is the, what is your take on him and the job he has done so far? Uh, throughout his tenure as the head coach, you know he, he's he's done a really good job, Jeff. You know I, he he's had a job that that no um, college football coach in the history of the sport ha- has experienced quite like he did. You know his first game was on the sidelines of the biggest game in this program's history, the Cotton Bowl, at the end of the 2019 season when you know Mike Norvell departed for Florida State. To start your career that way, and then three months later find yourself under you know, pandemic conditions where you had to recruit the way we're talking right now via phone or Zoom uh, is a challenge. You know, there was there was no one he could turn to for advice. You know, he, he was joking with me before the season that, you know, he couldn't exactly call Nick Saban or, 
or Brian Kelly and, and get, get pointers on dealing with you know, pandemic conditions. And on top of that, the transfer portal, NIL, um, these things that a college coach has to balance now. Um, you know, he's four and one. You know, every coach is measured by his numbers. Um, he's, he, he doesn't have the, the charisma that uh, you know, Mike Norvell brings into the room. I don't think he coaches with the fury. Justin Fuente did. You know, Justin Fuente in practice is not someone you wanted to be within 10 or 15 feet of. Um, Ryan Silverfield, he's, he loves Memphis, loves the job. I, I think he genuinely loves it. Um, he feels like he's part of the program, part of the community. Uh, but he's got to win. And, and Jeff, he's got to he's got to figure out a way to get more than 23,000 people into that that big stadium in the coming years. Um, um, again, it starts with winning. And if a four game winning streak becomes five, turns to six. The crowds will come. You know, I, I'm I'm rooting for Ryan on on a personal level because he's just you know having good guys around. You and I have both covered coaches and athletes that we wouldn't necessarily uh, want at the dinner table. And Ryan Silverfield is a guy that I, you know, if I had young children, he could babysit them. <laughs> there you go. But there you. That's a that's a hell of an endorsement there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's great. Um, so. Do people in Memphis still uh, root for Mike Norvell to have success at Florida State, or do you think they uh, they care? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think both with with Justin and uh, and Mike, uh, you know, a little different, very different from say basketball. When John Calipari left for Kentucky, the, the community felt betrayed. He built this juggernaut and and you know sort of disbanded it in that move east. In the case of Fuente and Norvell, especially long time. Tiger football followers recognize this place as, you know, n- not exactly a cradle of coaches, you know, but but to, to find it being a ladder towards something larger um, will only attract other good coaches. Like, you know, as, as Norvell came in, in, the, uh, uh, in the aftermath of Fuente and then Ryan Silverfield followed his, his, uh, his boss in four years. So, um, yeah, the, the Memphis community is pulling for, for Mike. Um, things didn't work out at at Virginia Tech quite the way Justin Fuente wanted. Um, but I, I have a feeling he'll land on his feet. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, part of their stories, Jeff, will always be Memphis. And that's that's different than, than, um, than, than former coaches we've seen before. Yeah. All right, so for the game Friday night, uh, you've all kind of already said you think this game will go on how well the Memphis defense uh, can play. Uh, what do you think is the outcome well, um, let me tell you two, two other variables I'd watch. Uh, one of them is um, I was struck by the number of penalties Houston has had in, in their, their five games, 52 penalties. Um, if the Cougars are, are hurting themselves, especially with pre-snap penalties, that's going to be a factor. And the Tigers also have a special punter in Joe Doyle. He, he kind of he was flipping that field Saturday when the Tigers couldn't score and pinning Temple back with 55, 60-yard punts. Um, those are two factors I think that might help help the Tigers. Um, you know, it's going to be a higher scoring game than we saw last weekend. I, you know, both in the 30s, I believe, and I, I, I'd say the Tigers are going to win by you know between six and ten points if I were were held to a bet, which I'm not going to be held to, by the <laughs> way. But uh, well, but, the, yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll let you bet with somebody else's money. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the way I typically do it. But yeah, I think the Tigers will hold serve. They're playing well at home. I think they're going to be up for this. You know, as I said, under the lights again, and uh, I, I think they'll prevail. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Frank, it's it's very interesting. You know, um, uh, as as uh, we've been covering this these teams uh, in the AAC and whatnot, and it, I always find this very fascinating. Uh, how how much of a community this has become, uh, especially in the world of podcasting. So I know recently uh, uh, Bubba Rosenbaum at the uh, Sports Objective podcast had reached out to me. Uh, I, I've been on their show many times. They've been on mine and, and say, hey, Jeff, do you got somebody from Memphis? We can't get a foothold there. So I said, yeah, I got your guy. <laughs> and so so uh, you've now become part of their uh, part of their, their their little network there. And uh, it's always fun to kind of see how, how all this connects, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that, Jeff. I, I wonder you know, why it took him so long to find me. I've, I've been here. I've been part of the woodwork around here for a while. But, yeah, I enjoyed my first visit with them. I, I'm, I'm here. If they have some other um, thoughts in mind about the Pirates, Tigers, and, and other AAC um, factoids. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to 
going to miss UCF and your presence in this league next year. It's sort of a the, – the AAC years have been, a, as you noted, sort of a, a bonding experience for, you know, what, what the commissioner wants to call a power six league. And it's, it's going to be very different next year without UCF, without Houston, without Cincinnati. And, and uh, that's – I get back to that – that tipping point I was describing for Memphis, Tiger football has to figure out what future is going to be. And um, you define the future by what you do now. And that, that's, that's what we're watching in the 2022 season here in Memphis. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because, you know, you know, three teams from the AAC go to the Big 12. Uh, you know, depending on how the expansion works out, what league, whatever, I mean, could you see kind of package deals happening again with maybe, you know, uh, uh, SMU? Uh, being part of the equation with Memphis or or another school. Yeah, yeah, you hope for that. You know, I if I were to look into a crystal ball and, and try and figure out what college football is going to be in the year 2030 or, you know, 2040, which sounds like a long time away in the, in the, by measure of, of big-time sports, it really isn't. Um, I, I think there are going to be maybe three, four super leagues, you know, each with, you know, maybe 20 teams and, and Memphis just has to be one of those because it's, it's going to become almost the equivalent of, you know, major league ba- baseball versus triple a or, or at least triple a double a. And you don't want to be, you don't want to be stuck in double a. Um, so, uh, you know, Memphis has to, they've got to, you know, renovate the stadium. They've got to keep recruiting the, the type of talent that can win games, compete for league championships. Uh, and they got to get, they got to get butts in the seats. I, I've emphasized that about three or four times during this, chat, but um, if Memphis can't get more than 23,000 fans out um, on fall Saturdays against conference rivals, they're not going to be attractive to a bit, one of those super leagues. Yeah, although you do have basketball as a as a, as a marquee yep. that you can put yep. out there, too, so that doesn't... That doesn't always there. That's yeah. always there. I'm afraid that's part, that may be part of the problem. There are folks who say, I'm waiting for basketball season to spend my money, hmm. you know, or you know, Penny Hardaway's got something special going Brian Silverfield, not so much. It's comparing and contrasting between program between sports isn't all that healthy. You need to support, you know, the the brand, which is the university. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Frank, as always, appreciate your visit. So please uh, make some shameless plugs for your coverage of the Tigers and anything else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it, Jeff. Uh, MemphisFlyer.com is where you can find my coverage of the Tigers, and I I'm on the basketball beat very soon uh, with Penny Hardaway's club. Um, I'm selling books. My novel, Trey's Company, is available at Amazon.com. It's a coming-of-age story. If, if your listeners like the movie Stand By Me or The Sandlot, this is a book that'll, um, that'll hit home for them. So, again, Trey's Company, Amazon.com. Help, uh, help a starving author uh, sell some books. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. Well, Frank, as always, we appreciate it. And uh, uh, best of uh, luck covering the Tigers uh, and throughout the rest of the season. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thanks a lot for having me. Houston at Memphis is a 7.30 kick Friday night on ESPN2. The Cougs lead the all-time series 16-14, to and Houston won last year's game 31-13. to The Player of the Week awards, Holt Nailers of East Carolina is the Offensive Player of the Week, 31-41 of for 465 yards and six touchdowns to lead East Carolina to their 20-point win over South Florida. He had five TD passes in the first half as uh, the Pirates rolled out to a 41-7 halftime lead. His sixth career game with at least 400 passing yards, and he's now moved into second place on the Americans' career touchdown passes chart with 85, only trailing former Memphis quarterback Brady White, who had 90. The Defensive Player of the Week, Nick Anderson of Tulane, once again, Having an outstanding game, matched his career-high 14 tackles, the most by an AAC player, and delivered the key defensive play in their 27-25-24, rather, overtime win at Houston. His forced fumble midway through the third quarter was returned for a Greenway touchdown to break what had been a 7-7 tie. Special Teams Player of the Week, Joe Doyle of Memphis. He was the instrumental in the field position battle in their rump over Temple. Uh, he averaged 53.5 yards per punt hitting four punts of at least 50 yards and one that went for 62. He is ranked second nationally at 49.2 yards per punt. Back with some more news and notes from other sports in the American. That's next when we come back on the AAC Report.
If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have, everything from wild to mild in there, absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats, Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain? Or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell. Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. As we look at other sports in the American, in the final leg of our program this week, we turn to volleyball. We might as well call it the McKenna Melville Award for the Offensive Player of the Week. Another impressive week as the Knights outside hitter averaged 6.83 points per set and 6.33 kills per set and a mind-blowing 514 in sweeps over Wichita State and Tulsa to go along with her 23 kills and the win over Tulsa. She added 12 digs to add a double-double to her stat line. The Defensive Player of the Week, Tatum Ticknor of SMU. As uh, the Mustangs went 2-0 in conference play, she finished with 5.5 digs per set, including a 26-dig performance at Cincinnati. And she also handled 39 of 40 receptions clearing. And Ticknor also dished out seven assists on the weekend as well. Women's soccer, the Offensive Player of the Week is Chiara Hahn of South, Plor- of South Florida. The Defensive Player of the Week is Lindsey Aiken of East Carolina. The Goalkeeper of the Week, Haley Woodward of Houston. And the Rookie of the Week is Alex Witchcraft, also of Houston. Men's soccer, the Offensive Player of the Week, Frederick Sil- Skilberg of SMU. The Defensive Player of the Week, Philip Hildebrand of FIU. Goalkeeper of the Week is Jack Hudson of UAB, and the Rookie of the Week is Jao Dominguez of FIU. Golf, the Men's Golf Athlete of the Month, Luis Carrera from UCF, and the Women's Golf Athlete of the Month, also from UCF, Tanrata Pidon. Cross Country, Men's Athlete of the Week, Cormac Dalton of Tulsa, and the Women's Athlete of the Week was Maddie Walker of Cincinnati, and in swimming, the Women's Swimming Athlete of the Week is... Christy Chu of FIU, and the Diving Athlete of the Week, also from FIU, Maha Gouda. And that's going to put a bow on this week's show, as always. Please follow me on Twitter at JeffAllen underscore 88, and you can follow the Nightline Sports Network at UCF underscore Nightline. This has been the AAC Report only on the Nightline Sports Network. I'm Jeff Allen. Thank you for listening.